Hey guys, I wonder if we did a survey of farmers all across the country and we asked them to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down for the animal in today's video. Well, I wonder how that would turn out. Today we are kicking off a series and this is one of four videos diving into the world of goats. Also, if you have any experience with goats, hit us up in the comments below and let us know what you think. Let's go. Goats. Just saying the word goats makes you smile. The world can't get enough of these adorable little kids. Literally, they're kids. That's what they're referred to. A few other terms that you may hear in this video are buckling, which is a young male goat, doling, which is a young female goat, and weather, that is a young male goat that has been castrated. Social media is full of those sweet, happy little goats in their pajamas, dancing and running and frolicking. A few minutes of these videos will break the manliest of men. Because of this, goats have become the latest pet trend. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there's a whole other side of goats that you may not be aware of. Characteristics that may give pause to your plants. So today, 10 questions you must ask yourself before getting goats. So the first question is, why do you want goats? Do you want these goats as pets? Do you want dairy goats? Do you want them for meat? Do you want them to clear land? Um, it's important to determine why you want these goats and that will kind of help you with what breed to get. Um, now, for example, the white goat to my right here, you can't see her head right now, she's a Nubian. They are great goats for almost everything. They're great dairy goats. Uh, they will produce one to two gallons of milk every day. They have a really high butter fat content, so the milk is sweet. It's very similar to cow's milk, and people love it. Um, the Nigerian dwarfs, which are smaller goats. Let me see if I can get her. She's way back there on the pedestal eating hay. She's also a great dairy goat. Um, she only produces about um, one to two quarts a day, but she still has a great butterfat content, so the milk is delicious. Um, if you're looking for meat goats, then again, you're going to want probably a bigger goat. The Nubians or the Boer are going to have more meat than, say, the Nigerian dwarfs, the little small girl back there. Um, a lot of people go with for pets will go with the Nigerian dwarf or the pygmy goats. They're very small. They uh, are under 100 pounds, so typically 50 to 70 pounds at, at adulthood. Um, you can get lots of different colors, lots of different styles. 
They're super friendly, very laid back. So they're great to consider as pets. Now let's talk about clearing your land for a minute because a lot of people have always been under this preconceived notion that goats will eat anything. And I'm here to tell you that is just not true. These goats back here are super particular. There's a lot of vegetables they don't like. There's a lot of fruits that they don't care for. They will not eat pop cans. They rarely even eat grass. So we consider cows to be grazers. Cows will go out into the field and they will graze. They will eat all of your grass. Goats are more of a browser. They're kind of like walking alongside of a salad bar and picking and choosing this, but not that. And that's exactly what goats will do. They will sniff one weed and they don't care for it. And then they'll go over to something else and they just love it. So they'll eat it to the ground. So they're not going to be super dependable about clearing areas, large areas or even small areas for you. They're only going to eat what they like. So the second question is, if you want a goat as a pet, have you considered um, adequate living space? Proper shelter for a goat or goats? And do you have supplies um, readily available to you? And do you have proper storage to place these supplies? So let's break that down a little bit. Adequate living space. Um, basically, if you do a Google search and uh, kind of investigate this a little bit, you'll see that you can have approximately four to eight goats per acre of land. Now, obviously, you could probably have a few more than that. Um, depending on the breed of goat. If you have smaller goats, then obviously you could probably have a few more than eight, but you want at least an acre of land um, up to eight goats. Now, it doesn't really matter if there's a lot of grass in this land because goats go more towards weeds and flowers and different things. Um, but also you will be giving them hay free choice. And what that means is they basically have hay out in their pasture readily available to them at all times. So that's something to consider as well. Now, in terms of proper shelter, goats absolutely detest the rain. They don't like to get wet. Most goats don't like to get wet. For my goats, if they feel the first drop of water, they are running for their shelter. So obviously you need a barn of some type or um, um, a lot of people use a, a three walled shelter with a roof, uh, but you just need something so that they can get in out of the elements away from the rain, away from thunderstorms. Uh, in the winter time, obviously they need to be warm, um, or not necessarily warm, but they need to be able to get in away from that cold wind and rain and sleet, uh, all of that stuff. So you'll have to have a good shelter. And then you have to have a place to be able to keep your supplies. Uh, you're not going to go out every couple of days and buy a bale of hay. So more than likely you're going to buy enough hay to get you through a week or two weeks or a month, how, whatever you choose to do, but you have to have a place to be able to store that. Now keep in mind, the average lifespan of a goat is 12 to 14 years. That's more than a lot of dog breeds. 
So it's also important to ask yourself, am I healthy enough to maintain this animal for 12 to 14 years? The third question to ask yourself is, am I prepared to do the proper homework? It's important that you get to know each breed. Um, every breed has a different characteristic and it's important for you to match that up with what works well with you and your family. For example, do you want a larger goat, something like a Nubian, a Boer, a La Mancha. The La Mancha goats are great milk goats. Um, they make great pets. They have very distinct ears. Um, and so a lot of times they're used as show goats. But the bucks can average right around 165 pounds. So, having known that, would you, would a, would a goat 165 pounds work well for you and your family? A Nigerian dwarf will be around 60, 65, 70 pounds at full maturity. They're smaller, they're super domesticated, very friendly, um, so if you're one of those people that like goat, for the goats to come in and out of the house, that would probably make more sense than one of your bigger goats. Question number four, are you ready for a crash course in anatomy and physiology in the goat world? because ready or not, you're gonna get it. At some point in this whole experience of you owning a goat, you are going to have to learn the anatomy. A lot of the ailments that goats will get are typically centered around their digestive tract. A goat has four stomachs. They are a rumen animal. So there's a whole process that happens when they eat. Most of the time when they get sick, it has something to do with that rumen, the stomach, or the di digestive tract. So it's better that you learn the details about all of this, how it works. Um, and it's better that you learn that now as opposed to waiting until the goat is sick and down. Because I'll tell you something, when a goat gets sick, they go downhill very quickly and you have to act fast. So that's something to consider. Um, it, there, there is a lot to this goat ownership and being familiar and educated about their anatomy and physiology is a big part of that. We are now up to question number five. So if you've came this far with me and you're still thinking about getting goats, I want you to stop everything you're doing and do this one thing. Go to Google and search for local livestock vets. This is absolutely a must. It is top priority. You must check your area to see if you have one or more livestock vets. There are some veterinarians out there that will do basic treatments with goats, and I'm talking about domesticated animal vets. Um, they will do a certain amount with goats. But when it comes to the serious stuff, they're gonna pass that on to the livestock vets. So it's very important that you find one, get to know them, visit their office, ask them about their knowledge, 
as a goat vet and would they be willing to take you as a client? This is, again, just one of the single most important things that you can do. As I stated earlier, when a goat gets sick, time is of the essence. They go down very quickly. There's nothing worse, there's no feeling worse than having um, a sick goat or a pregnant doe that is having difficulty kidding and you don't have a vet. You can't reach a vet. It, that feeling of helplessness is just terrible. And honestly, without the grace of God, you will lose that goat unless you have someone who is knowledgeable and can help you. Find a livestock vet. Number six is tied very closely to number five. Um, number six, the question is, are you willing to locate someone that can be a goat mentor for you? This is a great resource to have. The more, the better. So what I can suggest is to go on social media. There are tons of goat groups on Facebook and different places. So you can go to those groups and make friends. Let those people know that you are in the process of possibly getting goats um, and watch how quickly they jump on and congratulate you and, and offer to be there if you have any questions, um, if you just need to talk to someone. They are great in emergencies. Now, these aren't licensed veterinarians, and I'm not saying that at all, but these are people that have 20, 30, 40 years experience with goats, and they can give you a lot of tips and tricks to help you, even when a goat isn't necessarily sick, if uh, you're wondering if you're feeding the goat too much or not enough. If you're wondering um, in the summertime when it's 95 degrees out, is it okay to shave your goat? All these different questions, you can go to a mentor or to one of these groups and someone is super willing to help at all times. Now, I would suggest, if possible, to try to find a mentor that is local. And the only reason I say that is in the event that you get a sick goat and you are unable to reach a veterinarian, a lot of times you can look, reach out to, to these mentors and they can either talk you through the process or they will just come to your home and try to help you. I can't stress enough how great the goat community is. Uh, they have answered so many questions for me. So after you find a livestock vet, start looking for a mentor. You won't regret it. Yes, I'm using a Christmas coffee cup. Don't judge. A lot of you may possibly find question number seven slightly offensive. And I went back and forth wondering if I should keep this question in the video. And I decided to do it because Sometimes we just have to ask ourselves the hard questions. Question number seven is, can you afford goats? Now, first of all, let's talk about the supplies that you're gonna need on a daily basis. Hay, grain, minerals, um, certain types of medicines you will need if something occurs. You need trimmers for the hoofs and files. Um, you're going to need probably copper, 
selenium. These are just a few things that you're going to need to have in your arsenal if you're going to keep your goats happy and healthy. And again, we've talked about this uh, in previous questions, but let me just say again, there's nothing worse than having a sick goat on a Friday evening or a Saturday or Sunday. You're unable to reach your vet. You think you know what's wrong and you know what you need, but you don't have it. And all of the supply stores are closed. So all you can do is just watch your goat progressively get worse. A similar uh, instance happened to me with a young buckling that I had. He was, uh, he had bloat. And bloat is basically when gases get lodged into the stomach and uh, they can't release those gases. But what had happened was, um, not only did he have the bloat, but he had a touch of pneumonia. And I desperately needed an antibiotic. And it was a weekend and there was no one to help me. Now I do have a livestock vet. It just so happened that this particular weekend, he was out of town and there was no one to take call. And so basically within a window of eight hours, my little buckling went from standing and eating to on the ground and finally passed away through the night. And it was just terrible and I beat myself up every day over that. It's one of the hard lessons that we learn. And I wanna keep you from having to deal with those hard lessons. So I'm telling you now, search online, watch YouTube videos like this one, make a list of the things that you need and keep them at all times. You won't regret it. Question number eight is, do I have someone dependable that can look after my goat or goats if I have to be away overnight or for several days? Now, this doesn't seem like a real important question, but trust me, it is. A goat isn't like a dog. You can't simply take them uh, and have them kenneled for a weekend. They're gonna remain on your property and it's important to have someone that are that have some experience with these creatures uh, to take care of them properly while you're out of town so talk to your family talk to your friends again check out some of the goat groups um, on Facebook and social media you may find someone locally that is willing to help you out but find someone that can help you if something happens that you have to be out of town Question number nine is, what kind of goat do you want? Do you want a young buckling? Do you want a young doling? Do you want a weather? Or maybe you want an older goat. Now, I'm gonna to try to keep this simple so that I don't confuse you or me. And just as a refresher, a buckling is a young male goat that is intact. He can breed. A doling is a young female, and a weather is a young male that has been fixed, castrated. So now we have to again go back to why do you want this goat? If you're looking for a goat as a pet, then you will probably see when you do your research that a lot of people say that the bucklings are friendlier than the dolings. I haven't found this to be true or false. I raise both and they all seem equally friendly to me. Um, but there is one thing about a buckling that you're probably not going to want to deal with. Once they hit puberty, 
which is very young, about eight to 10 weeks, they're gonna start uh, letting off a smell. Their urine is gonna have a smell and this is how they kind of attract the does. So this goes on for quite a while and actually what they will do is when they urinate, they will aim that at their beard and their face so that they can get that scent on their face and I guess it reaches a, a bigger audience. Uh, that's probably not something that you're gonna want to deal with um, as having this goat as a pet. Uh, so maybe a weather would be more down your alley. However, if you want these goats for dairy or for meat, then you're probably gonna wanna keep a few that can breed and produce babies. So you're just gonna to have to figure all of this out. Again, decide what it is you want from this goat and then make your choice from that. So you still want a goat? No, really, that's question number 10. Do you want a goat after everything we've talked about? So the next thing to decide is where are you going to obtain this goat from? Some people will go straight to Craigslist and look for goats in their area. Just remember, if you do something like that, the old phrase that you get what you pay for. Oftentimes, and this is nothing against Craigslist, but oftentimes you will go to sites, yard sale sites or places like Craigslist and you will ask for something. The person that is selling may not have the knowledge that they should have. So they may be telling you that they're selling you a pygmy goat. You get that goat home and three months later, it's as tall as a small pony and weighs 150 pounds. And you find out that it's a mix of Boer and uh, Nubian and who knows what else. What I recommend is to find a breeder, a respectable breeder in your area. And if you can't find one in your area, you may have to travel a little bit. Um, but I would find a reputable breeder. Now, how do you know that they're reputable? Ask around, ask for references so that you can talk to some of their clients and find out exactly what type of a breeder they are. Um, once you have nailed down a specific breeder, Ask them if you can visit their farm, if you can look at their animals, if you can review their records. A reputable and good breeder will always have healthy and balanced animals and they will have the records to prove it. They have nothing to hide. So just know that that is a little more expensive than maybe Craigslist or some goat site that you find on Google, but it's worth the extra money. Know exactly what you are going after, what you're bringing home, and know that it has been taken care of, that it's had its immunizations, that it is healthy and sound, and that it's family is healthy and sound. And so now I'm going to give you my own personal review of goats. Will it be or overall the goat is one of my favorite animals by far. I have enjoyed raising goats for several years. I hope, Lord willing, to continue to raise these magnificent creatures as long as I possibly can. They bring me happiness. They bring me comfort. They are a lot of work. They can be very tricky when it comes to good health. But 
for me personally, drop my pen, for me personally, they are worth every minute of the work that I put in, and I just uh, can't say enough good things about them. The reason that I stress uh, the worst case scenarios on these videos is because inevitably some of you will decide to get goats and you will encounter um, problems, obstacles, and I want you to be prepared. But that doesn't take away from the fact that they are lovable and happy creatures and um, I love that they are just happy for no reason. And I think as humans, we could be a lot more like that. So if you like this video or if you have gained a little bit of knowledge at least, I would appreciate it if you would click like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.